The Oklahoma Sooners started fast on both sides of the football, but only one side was able to sustain it throughout the four quarters of their 28 to 13 Bedlam win. Josh Elmer and myself will discuss it on today's episode of Locked On Sooners. You are Locked On Sooners, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma Sooners, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, Sooner Nation? We have a win to talk about. Thank you for joining us. My name is John Williams. You can follow me on Twitter at John9Williams. You can read my work covering the Sooners over at Soonerswire.com. He's Josh Helmer. You can follow him on Twitter at Josh on Ref. You can also hear him Monday through Friday from 9 to noon on 94.7 The Ref in Norman. Josh, the Sooners got the 28-13 to 13 win in Bedlam at home on a cold, frosty, chilly night in Norman. What a great, what a great Saturday night. No doubt, yeah, and let's start here. I don't think Oklahoma fans and, you know, myself, anybody should really be in the market for trying to sit and think too much or be frustrated by the way that you want a football game. Okay, look, I get it. You race down in the football game offensively, 28-point first quarter, and then – Dormant, what happened offensively? We, we, we can discuss it, but let's not be in the business of being too awfully upset about it right now. Oklahoma and Oklahoma fans should be in the business of celebrating wins, point blank. This team is bowl eligible, John. That was something that, yeah, I, I get we're somewhere unfamiliar, but look, that was in question coming into this game and seriously in question coming into this game. So look, they're bowl eligible. They got off to a great start in this football game, and they won a football game. There's signs of life with this football team. Yeah, after a two-game losing streak, losing to Baylor the way you lost, losing to West Virginia the way you lost to that one, just getting a win is huge. Now, I'll readily admit that when I'm, man- I'm managing Locked On Sooner's social media account, I'm getting more and more nervous as that game goes along and I'm getting increasingly frustrated with the offense's performance. But by the end of it, you're just like – Ah, okay. Just got to win. And that's really all that matters. It doesn't matter how it matters, how many, right? And the Oklahoma Sooners are now 16, five, which yes, not a great record. It's not anything that you're going to look back on the 2022 season and be like, yeah, that was a fantastic season, but that was an important win for Brent Venables. It was an important win for the program in general. I mean, just on the off the field stuff, looking to the future, that was a huge win with as many five and four star recruits as you had in the house on Saturday night, you had to put your best foot forward. And the offense did that in the first quarter and scored 28 points. And the defense made that 28 point lead stand that they made the offense's fast start stand. And I mean, it wasn't a great game. They, they couldn't sustain it throughout Oklahoma state. I think they made some good adjustments. Obviously Oklahoma hurt themselves on several occasions, but the defense finally put together a good game four quarters. You can look at the yardage all you want, but Oklahoma came up clutch on the defensive side of the football. And that's something that I had been concerned that they didn't have, that they didn't have that clutch gene, that they didn't have the ability to make the plays to get off the field when they needed to. The defense won this game for the Oklahoma Sooners. I mean, yes, I mean, the offense, obviously, they played their part getting the 28 points, but the defense made it hold up. And that's not something we've seen from this defense all year long. You just look at the way that they started the game and John defensively for Oklahoma, save for the Baylor game, which look uh, was, was just not, not great really across the board though. You know, honestly, I, I could make an argument for you that because of the three interceptions, I'm putting a lot of blame at the, the feet of Oklahoma's offense for that Baylor game too. But defensively, right. That would be the one in recent memory here that you don't feel as great about. But look, the, the last two games that OU's won at Iowa State, Bedlam this weekend, in, in large part, yeah, what was keyed by the defensive performance in both of those games start to finish. And just the start, right? You know me. I like to look at the drive charts. It tells the story of how the game went. Punt, interception, interception, punt, punt, interception, punt. And then uh, stiffened up, forced the field goal try, which 
I thought that was a mistake by Mike Gundy in that moment, mm -hmm. not to try and go for the touchdown. I thought that was very symbolic of the way that he's approached this game, but maybe we can dive into that in more detail in a moment. And then it was punt into first half, punt, downs, punt. I mean, Oklahoma defensively in this game, John, got off to an incredible start. I mean, how many possessions is that? That's got to be about 10 possessions where basically you gave up, what, three to that point? Yeah, and they were flying around the football all night. They were putting pressure on Spencer Sanders. And you got the three interceptions in the first half, but there could have been several more. I mean, Spencer Sanders was begging to give you the football, and you capitalized. I mean, yeah, there were you know a Jonah Luula ball that went right through his hands, but, I mean, that's a tough play reaching up over your head. If you've never worn shoulder pads and tried to catch a ball like at the peak of your reach, that's really hard to do. Uh, there was another one where C.J. Colton almost had another one. Uh, and then I feel like there was one more. Danny Stutzman, I think, almost had one, another one as well. And and that's what is impressive about this team. And I think it was um, – oh, man, I'm, I'm blanking on his name now from the Oklahoman um, – Oh my gosh, I'm blanking on his name, but he had the stat where Oklahoma's had like 11 interceptions in the last three games. Um, and, and that's that's absolutely huge for this team. Like we're starting to see signs of life from this team. And that's what you're looking for. You're, you're looking for positive momentum as you're building this defense into what we expect it to be for the Oklahoma Sooners. Like this is not Brent Venable's defense yet but we're starting to see signs that it, it's going to get there. And this game, the West Virginia game, the Iowa state game, even though the West Virginia game didn't end well for the defense, they played well enough for the first half for the offense to do enough to win that game. But over you know three of the last four games, I felt like the defense has really come on strong. And this was another example of that Saturday night. I mean, the six sacks, 13 tackles for loss, four interceptions, seven pass breakups. They held Oklahoma State to, what, 2.7 yards per carry. Other than Spencer Sanders being able to get, you know, get free in the open field as he is able to do, they held the running game in check yet again. Unless it's quarterback run, teams can't run on this on this Oklahoma defense of late, except for Baylor. Baylor is just, they're the anomaly. They're the team that's just going to run on anybody. It doesn't matter how good you are, they're going to run on you. And so I, I think what we're seeing is this team starting to kind of put it together. You would have liked to see it obviously much earlier in the season, but with where we were, you know, back in that three game losing streak to TCU, Kansas state and Texas, we got to be pleased with where we're at now. We've got to be like, yeah, you got the two game losing streak to Baylor and West Virginia. That West Virginia loss was a disappointment, but with way the, the way the defensive played has played in three of the last four games to me, that's just a bright sign of where, we're headed. I mean, so many guys had an impact on this game. Deshaun White, David Aguebu, Danny Stutzman, Billy Bowman, Woody Washington made two touchdown saving plays. One uh, on a, uh, a catch and run, I think it was by, uh, I want to blank on his name too, Brendan Johnson maybe, or Braden Johnson, uh, the Oklahoma State wide receiver. Um, so yeah, Braden Johnson, he, he you know beat CJ Colden and then got free, broke a tackle, and was off to the races. And Woody Washington played that perfectly, You know, didn't give up kind of the, the leverage he had, forced him to the sideline, ended up making a tackle. And then on a Brennan Presley punt return that, I mean, he was just you know going straight down the field. Woody Washington's blocked and sticks his arm out there and, and trips him up and makes the tackle. Two potentially touchdown-saving plays. Just so many guys on the defense stepped up in this game. And I think that's the thing that, that stands out the most about this one is that you had contributions and I didn't touch on all of them just then you had contributions at every level of the defense. And to me, that's the unique thing. It wasn't one unit that played well. It was all three units on the defense played really, really well in this game. No doubt. Yeah. Fr front to back, uh, really played great defensively. I was doing some, uh, quick on the go math here and, in, unless my numbers are just dreadfully wrong here, I think that Oklahoma in the final eight drives defensively allowed 385 total yards. And uh, it was on the first 13 possessions of this game, John, that OU surrendered three points. So, look, we can get into total defensive yards. Uh, well, total yards that you allowed defensively, total offensive yards for your opponent. That's all fine, well, and good. And, sure, that's uh, – you know, one ingredient to judge a defense, but the most important ingredient to judge a defense, John, is the fact that they, again, only gave up the field goal 
in the first uh, 13 drives and that uh, you give up the 13 points in the game, right? I mean, that's uh, obviously what you're looking for. And, and, you know, big picture, what you talked about there, the defense is clearly making strides, which that's what we wanted to see, right? I mean, how many times have you and I sat here and said, look, show me progress before year's end. And I'm not going to be the same person that sits here and says, show me progress, show me progress, show me progress. And then we get a little progress and ignore it. No, defensively, these uh, last several games now, Baylor game excluded, there's there's been some progress, some signs of things turning a corner for Oklahoma defensively, and that's great. Yeah, and we're going to continue to break down the defensive side of the football, and we'll have some things to say about the offense as well because, again, you don't win this game without what they did in the first half or the first quarter putting up the 28 points. So we'll talk about that as well. But first I want to talk to you about simply safe. It's getting close to the holidays. And did you know that property crimes like burglar burglaries and package theft spike nationally around this time of the year? That's why our friends at simply safe home security are offering 50% off their award winning security system so that more families can feel safe and secure to this holiday season. Order your Simply Safe system for half off today and enjoy advanced security and greater peace of mind this holiday season. You, you'd hate to order a package, a present for a loved one, get it delivered to your door when you're at work or you're out doing other Christmas shopping or visiting friends, and then to come home and not be able to find that package. There's nothing worse than, than being stolen from. I, I've lived overseas and I've been pickpocketed. I've had stuff you know taken out of my house. And it sucks. There's nothing worse than than having something taken from you, just being stolen from. And so you have an opportunity here using our promo code, you know, locked on college at simplysafe.com to get 50% off of a fantastic home security system. They offer 24-7 professional monitoring with professional agents that use fast protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify that the threat is real so you can get priority police response. Again, Simply Safe is a great home security system and it can even provide a great deterrent for people who might try to you know, steal something off your front porch or break into your home. Uh, again, 24 seven professional monitoring that costs less than $1 per day, less than half the price of ADT's traditional pro- professionally installed system. Again, simplysafecom slash locked on college. You can get 50% off. We recommend it. This is their biggest discount of the year. So don't wait. There's no safe like simply safe. And Hey, thank you for making locked on Sooners your first listen every single day. We're just over 200 subscribers away from getting to 3000. would love to get there by the end of 2022. Make Locked On Sooners your first listen. Subscribe to the show. And for your second listen, go check out Locked On Sports Today with Peter Bukowski, giving you all of the latest news and top stories in sports in under 20 minutes. Again, Locked On Sports Today with Peter Bukowski. So, Josh, we we talked. I talked a little bit about some of the guys who made significant impacts in this game. The thing that one of the, the units that really stood out to me and something I've been really and we've been really begging for all year was the defensive line in particular. The interior defensive line had their most dominant game of the season. Isaiah Coe, Jordan Kelly, Jalen Redmond, Jeffrey Johnson, those four guys were huge in this game. I mean, sacks, tackles for loss, stuff in you know, the, the run game. I mean, it was a great game. You know, you look at Jordan Kelly, he had six total tackles, two sacks, two and a half tackles for loss. Uh, or Isaiah Coe had five tackles, half a sack, two tackles for loss. You had Grayson Halton getting in on the action with two tackles. Jeffrey Johnson had a tackle and a half a tackle for loss. Uh, or sorry, yeah, half a tackle for loss. Jalen Redmond had a tackle and a sack. And then, he, you know, he even had two quarterback hits. Like, just a great all-around performance from the interior defensive line. And, I mean, yeah, Ethan Downs had a great game. Jonah Lua had a great game. Just the defensive line in particular, like, that was a very impressive performance for them. Um, and maybe like for a guy like Ethan Downs, who's going to be here next year, some other guys might still be here next year. Like potentially that's a springboard game. Like that's a game that you can build toward your junior year with Oklahoma by having a strong performance at the end of the season. Absolutely. It's huge. We've been waiting on that. feels like uh, for a minute for Oklahoma to have that type of defensive production up front. And you talked about a lot of it. I'll just share some of the overall team statistics. I mean, you, you know, you think about these, 13 TFLs 
and six sacks. That right there, that's uh, – man, that's exactly what you're looking for. And, and on top of that, I mean, right, it's not uh, not even just the TFLs or sacks. Sometimes it's the plays that you force a quarterback into making. Twelve quarterback hurries in this game. I don't have the other uh, stat books in front of me right now at this particular moment, but I'm going to go out on a limb, John, and say – Probably there's not a lot of games this season where Oklahoma's had 12-plus quarterback hurries. They had Sanders under duress early and often in this game, and guess what? What did we see? We saw three interceptions critically in this game uh, from Sanders. Saw four of them total, right? So Oklahoma created havoc, right, created mistakes, and we just have not seen this Oklahoma defense, especially like you said, from the interior and just from its collective defensive line do a lot of that so far this season. We thought we were going to have those guys. Uh, you know, I'm I'm thinking kind of namely some of the younger, some of the younger players up front and Ethan Downs, like you mentioned. We thought that he was going to be a, a one man wrecking crew at times in 2022, and it totally hadn't really hadn't really happened uh, up until uh, this game. But just across the board, man, they were so good. And again, I come back to our evergreen thought, which is. Show me something, right? Dangle that carrot in front of me. Uh, I'm just, uh, I'm just a hungry uh, Bugs Bunny here, ready for the 2023 season, right? Dangle the carrot in front of me. There you go. Yeah, and Ethan Downs, he had six total pressures according to Pro Football Focus, which led the Oklahoma Sooners. According to Pro Football Focus, they had Spencer Sanders under pressure on 40 percent of his dropbacks. He dropped back to pass 80 times in this game. He had 67 attempts, but he dropped back to pass 80 times. So on 32 dropbacks, Oklahoma had him under pressure. Like the dude was running for his life. And if he weren't athletic, he doesn't make it through that game. Like if he's not the physical, you know, just the quarterback that he is and able to get outside the pocket like he's able to, he doesn't make it out of that game because Oklahoma had him under duress all night long. Our Mason Thomas had another strong game. And this was like, to me, this was his cleanest game. You know, we've seen flashes from him throughout the season, but this was the game where he kind of put some things together and didn't make that freshman mistake that we'd seen from him in previous weeks. Um, you, you saw Oklahoma really kind of empty the, the depth chart a little bit. Uh, you saw guys like Gentry Williams getting snaps. You saw guys like um, Grayson Halton I mentioned earlier. You saw you know Kobe McKenzie get in on the act. You saw um, – oh, Kip Lewis get a, get a few snaps as well. Like this was a, this was a defense. Well, maybe Kip, I don't see Kip Lewis's name here. Um, but they, I mean, they had they had to play a lot of people because they had to play 103 snaps. Danny Stutzman again, an Iron Man for this team. Deshaun White, David Agwebu, they all played over 100 snaps. Woody Washington, C.J. Colden played over 100 snaps. Billy Bowman played 96 snaps in this game. So like. Yes, the defense is going to wear down a little bit when you play that many snaps and you might give up some yards. You're going to give up some chunk plays when you're having to be on the field for as much as they were, which is going to probably lead us into our next segment and talking about the offense a little bit. And again, we don't want to trash the, the offense a whole lot, but there are some things that didn't go well offensively that could have ended up hurting this team in the end. Ultimately, it didn't. But I mean, that's part of the reason that Oklahoma was on the field for 103 snaps in this game is because of the offense is inefficiency. But we're going to do that after Josh talks to us about our Nissan thrilling moment. This week's Nissan thrilling moment in Oklahoma Sooner football. It's brought to you by, well, you guessed it. It's brought to you by Nissan. The thrilling designs behind the new lineup from Nissan, they're intended to empower drivers and vehicles as capable as the driver themselves. And when I think of unbelievable abilities on the football field this past weekend for the Oklahoma Sooners, comes back to Deshaun White late, right? I mean, that was kind of the moment, that interception, to where you thought, okay, Oklahoma's about to win this football game. You know, leading into some of the offensive, where is this football team at? Kind of felt like if Oklahoma State had scored on that drive, maybe – they were going to have a chance to, to make this a football game late. But obviously, Deshaun White, big interception, fourth of the night, and uh, that put the game away for Oklahoma. The other thrilling moment brought to you by Nissan had to just be the first quarter in general, right? I mean, just the way the whole first quarter played out for Oklahoma to race out, score the 28 points that they did, and uh, defensively to get off to the rip-roaring start that uh, they got in this game. Either or, take your pick, right? The, the game-winning interception late or just the first quarter itself, which was the – 
you know, game winning first quarter, if you will, for the Sooners. This segment, again, inspired by the thrilling new designs featured across Nissan's new lineup of vehicles. Pursue what thrills you in the all new Frontier, Armada, or Pathfinder today. Available now at NissanUSA.com. Okay, so obviously we've buried the lead on this, right? Because I do think, again, it's important coming out of this Bedlam game to, guys, let's not. Let's not get carried away with all these different complaints with Oklahoma right now. I, I got it. I understand what was it? Was it six consecutive three and outs uh, to end the game for Oklahoma offensively, basically? And I think they had nine three and outs uh, in the game. So look, I, I get the issues. You, I get the issues that you had offensively, and we're about to dive into those. But again, my my take here for you: celebrate the twenty-eight to thirteen win. Deal with complaints moving forward, but celebrate the win. That being said, John, what the heck was that offensively to close this game from OU? So you like to do the drive charts. You, you touched on the positives um, for the defense to, to open the game. Let me just touch on the negatives for the offense to, to close the game. So from the 1232 mark of the second quarter, Oklahoma went punt, punt, turnover on downs, interception that's the one at the end of the second half or the second quarter um off of the you know the throw there's a little bit behind drake stoops it gets batted up in the air they pick it off so that ends the first half and then oklahoma comes out punt 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 this starts your that starts your string of three and outs and you go three and out punt 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 and then you know you kneel on the ball to close the game, but yeah, just, you know, yeah, I think, I don't know how many first downs they got, but it weren't very many, uh, but you punted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 times, turned it over on downs and had the interception um, over the final, what, 42 minutes of game time. Um, so not great, but because of your great first quarter, you were, able to survive it. You were able to, um, overcome that, that, you know, in, in any other game, if you don't have that great first quarter and that's how you play for three quarters, then you're getting blown out. Like you're losing big. Um, but you had the great first quarter where Dylan Gabriel was just on fire, like 14 of 18 for over 200 yards passing two touchdowns. Yeah. Two touchdowns passing one to Jaleel Farouk, one to Drake Stoops and then a touchdown rushing, and then Eric Gray's got a touchdown. I mean, that first quarter, like Dylan Gabriel looked like on fire, like he was about to put up like four or 500 yards passing, and they couldn't be stopped. Like everything was going Oklahoma's way in that first quarter. Adjustments happened. Oklahoma State made adjustments. They came out and they, they played better throughout the final three quarters. Some of it was uh, mistakes by Oklahoma that, that took some points off the board kept them unable to convert on, you know, third downs. One that one play that stands out is a swing pass to Gavin Freeman, where if Dylan Gabriel's are on, on target with that throw, or if Freeman runs the, I don't know if it was Freeman didn't run the route sharp enough, or if Gabriel just missed him either way falls incomplete. Oklahoma's forced to punt. Then you have uh, the greatest will, the Braden Willis fumble down in the red zone after a nice catch and run. Um, just, uh, kind of a good play by Oklahoma state to get your helmet on the ball, but just poor ball security by a guy who's been one of your more reliable players this year. Uh, and then you got the interception again, that takes points off the board. So you lose at least six points down in the red zone off of turnovers. Um, and then you miss out just on a first down, you know, potential first down conversion off of just a, a poorly, you know, uh, executed swing pass. So, yeah, I mean, some of it was them hurting themselves, especially in that second quarter. I think in the second half, I want to give credit to Oklahoma stakes. I felt like they played a lot better defensively, but in the second quarter, a lot of the, the inability to score points was more on Oklahoma's side of things than it was on Oklahoma state side of things. That all being said, what a fantastic performance from Jake Stoops. And, and I don't know if you want to touch on some of the negative things that happened offensively, but I just wanted to kind of turn it back to the positive because again, 28 points in the first quarter is fantastic. Drake Stoops had a career game. The most receptions he's ever had in a single game for the Oklahoma Sooners was six. The second most yards he's ever had. He was only four yards away from tying his career best in yardage on in Bedlam. Um, led the Sooners with nine targets. Just and the dude was clutch. Like he made that clutch, you know, kind of falling or fading fadeaway catch 
uh, down inside the five that set up Oklahoma's first touchdown. And then he had the beautiful catch in, in the end zone uh, to give Oklahoma their last touchdown of the game. Just a, a great kind of great way for him to potentially play his last home game uh, for the Oklahoma Sooners. I'm with you. Yeah, no, he uh, obviously – was terrific. I guess he could come back though, right? If uh, if he wanted to, we'll I think we'll so. see. Uh, we'll we'll see what uh, his decision is there. But if that was the the curtain curtain call in uh, Gaylord Family Oklahoma Memorial Stadium, that was not not the worst way to go out, right? Six grabs, eighty nine and a touch. Uh, so he was really good. You know, I've got uh, obviously a bunch of thoughts, and I figure throughout the course of the week we'll talk more about really the offense's shortcomings, its fast start, and then. Uh, sputtering after that that's I think going to drive a lot of the negative conversation throughout this week as uh, obviously you uh, you build up to the road trip out to to Lubbock but man I can't spin away from just the positive in the negative for Oklahoma which was I, I gotta tell you man I think it's one of the best things that could have happened to this football program the way that Saturday night played out instead of Oklahoma just offensively rolling along the fact that man they stunk offensively for three quarters and the defense carried you to victory, I think is great for Oklahoma. And I think, you know, big picture, long picture view for Oklahoma. The fact that defensively we didn't see things just erode us the way. And I look, I get it. The total yards discussion. And I know that probably Mike Gundy has a hand in this as well, because I thought really from start to finish, he was too conservative. For Oklahoma State, I thought he could have stressed Oklahoma's defense a little bit more, but I give credit where credit is due to OU's defense. And, John, I think it's one of the best things potentially that could have happened to Oklahoma for us to genuinely leave the game, right? And I don't think there's a whole lot of argument about it. OU's defense, like you said early in this uh, episode, Oklahoma's defense won the game. And uh, Oklahoma's offense for three quarters didn't do much to help Oklahoma out. So, I again, a negative becomes a positive for Oklahoma. You know, I think it was Mark Aduck on Twitter that put it best. He said it was like Oklahoma like jumped out to a seven nothing lead in the first inning of a baseball game and, you know, gave up a, a run in the second, then gave up a run in the fourth and then a run in the fifth. But ultimately they, you know, they won the game seven three. If we're talking in baseball equivalency, I think everybody would still be cool with that, right? Like if you won a baseball game seven to three, even though you didn't score over the final eight innings of the game or say the final five or six innings of the game, but you won the game, you'd still probably be pretty happy. Now you, you don't want to strike out, you know, what the last seven innings of the game, you know, go 18 batters without getting a hit, but you'd still come away with like, Hey, that's a win. And, and you'd be content with it. And yeah, I mean, you want perfection. You strive for that. Brent Venable says it all the time. Best is the standard. Oklahoma wasn't at its best throughout the four quarters of that game. But in a season where things haven't gone perfect for this team very often, and they haven't gone good for this team very often, uh, a, a season where you have five losses, you haven't had that many losses in a long, long time, you just take the wins when you can get them. And you just enjoy the win. And that's what we're trying to do here tonight. We, we definitely you know, have to allude to some of the negative things, but we don't want to just beat down on it because that's not very much fun. But we'll have to touch on some of that as the week goes along because, I mean, there were some serious issues. Brent Venables was asked about time, you know, clock management. And I think we got to touch on that in our next episode. Uh, you got to talk about you know, just some of the inaccuracy, some of the, the drops. Um, got to talk about the, the inability to get Eric Gray the football at times in the second half. Uh, going away from Javante Barnes at times, who I thought was having a really good games as well. So there's some things that we're, we're going to have to touch on this week. We'll do that in later episodes. We'll have our live show Monday night at 9 p.m. So make sure you're tuned in for that. Uh, we'll take your questions, take your thoughts, your comments. We'd love to interact with you on that front. So make sure you're subscribed to the show on YouTube so that you can be a part of the show uh, during our live show. But yeah, Josh, any other parting thoughts on the game before we, before we get out of here? Look, Again, as uh, I open with, I will close with. There's nothing uh, too much to complain about with the Bedlam victory. I guess because of the nature of the beast and the nature of this industry, John, guess what? Next episode, we're going to do that. But in this episode, I'm going to celebrate. I'm not going to 
dwell a bunch on the poor clock management and the gloom and doom that that means for Oklahoma's future. No, I'm going to celebrate a Bedlam win, and I'm going to celebrate bowl eligibility for Oklahoma. That's right. And we're going to celebrate the engagement of two uh, Oklahoma greats, Michael Turk proposing to Grace Lyons on the field after the game. And she said, yes, that's just good times. That's 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 fun. How can you have any bad feelings when you see something like that happen? And so congratulations to Michael Turk and Grace Lyons. Um, make many happy years. May there be many happy years ahead of you. Blessings. Uh, to you in that front. So that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Sooners. Thanks so much for tuning in and being a part of the show. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. We're free and available on all podcast platforms. Follow us on Twitter at Locked On Sooners or on Facebook, Locked On Sooners Podcast. You can also follow myself at John Nine Williams or Josh at Josh on Ref and check our work out where we do other works. But until next time, when we have our live show 9 p.m. Monday night, For Josh Helmer, I'm John Williams. We'll catch you then. Boomer Sooner.